Here, as you can see, a, a variety of cameras I've got with me today I'm going to show that are the first ones I used as a child. I started using this about age two. I took parents' photos with it. The first pictures of my, I ever took in my life were of my parents with this camera. It's an old Kodak box camera, about 1955. I even have the original box it came in, as you can see here. It has an original price tag still in, I think, of uh, $5.95 from Myron Frank Department Store in about 1955. I found this in my storage unit recently. I have the original flash that went with it. I don't have it here with me today, but in the house. So I spent the next few years looking through this as a child, even without film in the back of it. I probably uh, discovered I wasn't taking pictures when there was no film in it, but I walked around and looked through the viewfinder, the little right angle viewfinder, and the whole world was backwards in the viewfinder. So I spent a lot of time looking through this, composing pictures without really taking them. Um, seeing things backwards didn't bother me as a left-hander, I guess. And by the time of high school graduation, I bought a Mamiya Secor 1000 DTL. These were highly raved about in the photography magazines, not getting quite the attention of the Canons and Nikons in their day, but they were also uh, equally popular for their high quality optics. They had a beautiful f1.4 lens, wide open, you can see all the light coming through, they're fantastic and great for night sky photography. And so I used this probably for, oh gosh, most of my adult early life, taking photos of the family and uh, our daughter at birth and uh, and still till recently, about 10 years ago, until I bought the first digital camera. Friends of mine who are longer in photography than I am had an amazing amount of rare cameras here where I reside for the last few years. And uh, they had this in their storage. I just had to take it out and show it today. It's a Kodak, oh, I've dropped the case here. It's a Kodak Retina. These were very popular in the 1950s. They were made in Germany for Kodak with a very high quality lens by Schneider and uh, they're amazing cameras interesting the film winds at the bottom and then the top is the shutter of course but they have this beautiful clamshell cover that covers the uh, front up and fold shut very well protected with the customary wrap around camera case that goes on the back snaps on and wraps around the front and then snaps over the top to seal it beautifully with the gorgeous leather with the blossom name Retina on the front. Anyway, in the background here are other cameras that are popular over the years. This is the one that George Eastman made so popular in the late 1800s. It's the first one that popularized photography and the, uh, the famous ad line, you push the button, we do the rest. And you took a whole roll of film, exposed it, sent the whole camera back to Eastman Kodak. They processed the film, sent you the prints back, and reloaded it with fresh film for you. So you couldn't ask for more. It did everything for you. All you had to do is, in those days, it wasn't a button. It was actually a pneumatic, air, air pneumatic controlled shutter bulb. And this is a large view camera here on my right that friends had here on the property where I lived. These are used by more so like professionals like Ansel Adams used. Um, it's a large, oh, I think it's a 4 by 5 or even larger than that. It takes a negative plate in the back that large with a viewing glass in the back end of it that you could actually look into. And, uh, but everything was upside down and backwards as you viewed in the back of it. So. Anyway, a short essay on my life in cameras and photography because people have probably never see me actually talk about it or show what I grew up with. So I just did this today for... Uh, Old nostalgia's sake. Anyway, enough said.